Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Here's a tweet from Miles Dudger. In both prior cycles, altcoins have peaked exactly 546 days post having. It's an interesting metric. If this cycle follows the same pattern, this would suggest an altcoin peak by October 2025, kind of around that same time that we're uh, estimating that the market is going to peak, guys. So check this out. Cycle peak 546 days in 2016. The same thing happened in 2020. And so we're estimating the same thing could happen again in 2025, 546 days post having. So as he mentioned uh, in his latest thread, and I will link this, as he mentioned in his latest thread, and I will link this in the description of the video if you guys want to keep track of this, for a variety of reasons, cycle acceleration, macro factors, etc. I think we peak earlier than this. And admittedly, only looking at two data points is too simplistic. But the point still stands that we are probabilistically still early in the cycle from an altcoin point of view. As you can see, Bitcoin dominance is rising. Altcoins have taken a bit of a back seat right now, even though 24 hour volume is up. So we have seen a, a sell off. We did recently see a sell off yesterday. Market cap is still holding at around 2.45. We've got neutral sentiment in the space. So uh, a bit fear is slowly creeping back in guys as we are receding back down into the red I brought up the total to market cap here just to show you guys uh, where we stand as of today generally what we see here if I throw up a, a horizontal horizontal why is that not going horizontal line why is that not going all right let me refresh that reload all right my internet just cacked out on me for a second there but uh, i got it back up so what was i talking about right if i throw a horizontal line up here to the top of the total two market uh and we just bring up the price range tool here uh you guys can see we are 60 percent, about 60 percent off that all-time high generally what happens is once we do hit this all-time high we tend to see the alts rally so if we do have 546 days i mean we are already in sometime now since the halving, but to get up another 60% and then the blow off top guys, that is going to happen throughout that 546 days. So that would be the total amount of days to get up past that all time high. But guys, we generally, what we generally tend to see is the lion's share of that appreciation after that and very, very fast. Let's just bring up the total three uh, to see how high we are off the total three. So guys, remember total two is uh, all coins excluding Bitcoin. And the total three is all coins excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if we exclude Ethereum, how low are we? How much do we have to go to get up to that all time high? That is about 70%, some, sorry, 75%. So 60% for the total two and 75% for the total three. So that all makes sense. At the time of this recording, we are seeing one Bitcoin going for roughly $67,000. Here, let me throw a price tag on there. Price label, 67700 I mean, on the daily chart, guys, we are not, uh, we're not seeing too much in terms of volatility, although the altcoin market felt like it did get rocked the other day. Uh, but really, guys, it's just miniature moves here, really. It's just miniature moves. All this is going to seem like uh, very small potatoes once we do see that huge move to the upside, which brings altcoins ultimately up uh, 10, 20, 30% a day. So that is the euphoria phase when you start seeing tons of green on here and these numbers are, you know, anywhere upwards of 10% at the lowest. Sometimes we see 70, 80, 90% gains daily for some of these alternative cryptocurrencies. So, um, you know, that is when we have to be the most mindful, right? Also the point in time when I'm going to be sharing my analysis over there at patreon.com slash working money channel, my targets for selling these altcoins. Hopefully we get a 50, 60, 75, 100X banger in there. Right now, XRP, unfortunately, is trading at 48.7 uh, as of the time of this recording. So it's gone up a little bit since yesterday, but still just trying to make it up above that uh, that trend line there. We have seen some significant wicks down, uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, guys, XRP is still holding the trend. And XRP is the last mover, too. So, you know, it has maintained its position in the coin market cap. I'm really excited to see how high XRP will go once we do have full clarity once there is no more looming lawsuit overhead the market sniper here also brought this up okay 
So the macro economy outlook isn't looking good for the US dollar as an example. Potential crisis, says Market Sniper. This is Francis Hunt. Uh, China dumps US treasuries. Listen to this. China's gold rush, the one chart of gold being accumulated by China in white and the disaccumulation of the USDTs and treasuries in red. So China's holding of treasuries going down. No surprise there after the Russian events and gold accumulation in billions absolutely going up. How does this play out? And how does this movie end? Francis, if you and I understand the difference between a treasury and gold, I mean, treasuries are a sovereign obligation that can be defaulted on. Gold can never default. The Chinese certainly understand this. There's your chart. They're selling treasuries and buying gold. How does it all play out in the end? I think it's pure math at this point that in current dollar terms, whether it be by printing or outright default, there's going to be a default in the U.S. Treasury market, and that will spread to credit all over the world. That's your final outcome. The Fed is going to be buying treasuries directly from the Treasury. And at this point, the Fed and Treasury merged together. It's an in-house circle, if you will. This obviously didn't help as well. Russia's Moscow Stock Exchange officially halts trading in U.S. dollars and euro. This just came out yesterday. $773 billion in market cap just halted trading in U.S. dollars and euro. Not messing around, this coming from Sean McBride, but uh, this article was originally from Watcher Guru here. So, in response to a new round of sanctions on the BRICS nations, Russia's Moscow Stock Exchange has halted all trading of the US dollar and the euro. The leading financial marketplace in the BRICS 2024 chairmanship nation has also stated that both share trading and money uh, market trade in both currencies would also stop. The halt was implemented following the US Treasury Department's newly implemented financial penalties on Russia. Specifically, the agency sanctioned more than 300 entities while noting it is taking a sweeping aim at the foundational financial infrastructure of the country in a recent press release. So Russia not messing around Moscow uh, Stock Exchange halting US dollar and euro trading. So, you know, another slap in the face. And, you know, these guys are not shying away from de-dollarization efforts either when it comes to their trading. Of course, DLT technology is playing a large role in this. They have stated it publicly that, uh, you know, more and more uh, Russian trade, for example, is going through the Russian ruble, the native fiat currency of Russia. The East is saying that uh, this focus has stemmed from an increased weaponization and politicization of Western currencies which uh, I don't necessarily disagree with. Those efforts have only persisted today with one alliance nation answering the newly imposed penalty. Um, so this, you know, they, they think this is going to affect Russia, but the thing with Russia is they have everything they need over there in that large country. They've got all the natural resources. They don't need to trade with the United States. Uh, and they can be, you know, the U.S. slash Canada, because both the United States and Canada both have a lot of natural resources. Uh, but Russia could act as that powerhouse over there in the East, and they can be the country that trades with, uh, you know, with China and India and all those other BRICS nations without even flinching about not using the U.S. dollar. So this is going to affect the economy as well. I just want to take a look. I haven't, uh, I haven't done this recently. Just wanted to take a look at the DJI. So uh, teetering a little bit again, the DJI Dow Jones Industrial Average on the daily, not looking great. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Are we seeing, are we witnessing the beginning of a double top pattern? Are we going to make a higher high after this? Or are we going to come back down? Let's take a look at the SPY. S&P 500 stock index is looking uh, a lot healthier than the Dow Jones. Did in fact uh, open up higher yesterday and uh, in pre-trade right now, looking like it is going to be opening up higher, at least as of uh, the time of this recording. Keeping on with this theme, guys, cryptocurrency adoption in the United States is the only uh, solution, really, I think the only tool, but the U.S. has messed it up big time. Since 2018, we could have solved this problem in a different way. Here's Hester Peirce commenting on the matter. I don't know, maybe throwing Gary Gensler under the bus a little bit. What does it actually look like? What do we want these, these ICO project teams to be doing? What would good disclosure look like? What would customers buying these tokens want to know and how can we get to that place and i think if we had thought about that seriously and rigorously in 2018 um, we would be in so much of a better place now and that was the time when lots of people in the industry were coming in and they were saying here's how we're trying to think about the issue we could have engaged with them on that instead of just um, as we often do they come in and talk to us and they get stone-faced 
looks and response and no, no interaction. This was a regulatory failing on our part, and the result has been a lot of problems, including investor harm, customer harm, whatever they are. Um, I think uh, you know some of the problems that have arisen in the industry wouldn't have arisen had we done a better job. I'm not saying all the blame sits on the SEC. Absolutely not. There are a lot of bad actors who have done a lot of bad things in the name of crypto, who have uh, hurt people, stolen their money, um, and you know that's also unacceptable. Um, but we should be thinking about how can we not do this again in the future with other technologies. It really is a shame. This could have gone a very, very different way. But now the de-dollarization is here to stay. And even Bank of America is commenting on this, courtesy of Smoke here on Twitter. Just take a look at this. They mentioned the BRICS nations in this recent report, increasingly settling payments in their own currencies and considering the creation of a joint currency. And then down here, in sum, while increasing adoption of alternatives to the dollar will take time, a gradual erosion of its dominant position of the global financial market stage is probably inevitable. Partial de-dollarization is here to stay. So they are saying, look, it's already happening. It's already happened. Uh, these countries are already using their own currencies to make transactions in. The Russian stock market here, as, uh, as Smoke also does reiterate, has officially announced today that they are halting USD transactions. So it's not looking good. The United States has messed up the regulation for crypto rules. So, you know, getting a later start on tokenization, tokenizing the economy, which also brings us to a bit of a disadvantage. Another great clip here from Subjective Views, former economic advisor to President Trump, Judy Shelton, comments on the reserve status of the United States dollar. And here's a quote. I say being the dominant reserve currency is not something you want to lose. That is our greatest instrument of soft power around the world. And, uh, you know, now that we have lost it a little bit in terms of, uh, well, in terms of full dominance, what is that going to mean? If China went on a gold standard, they would be where the United States was in 1944. They would be the one. Now, do I think that's part of China's interest? I do. I also think that we see the BRIC countries trying to set up an alternative to the U.S. dollar. Now I say being the, being the dominant reserve currency is not something you wanna lose. That is our greatest instrument of soft power around the world. And I heard that from Robert Gates, a former defense secretary. That is very powerful for us. We wanna retain that and it looks like we can, but we sure don't wanna jeopardize it. And we now see China and Russia and other countries, um, I think Saudi Arabia is in the mix. We need to watch them. Argentina was planning to join that BRICS approach with a new currency. And I hope the US realizes what a great potential strong ally we have for Western values and Javier Millet, their president, Argentina's president stop that in its tracks. Argentina would have joined in January of this year. And he said no. And they've gotten they they've gotten loans from China to pay back the International Monetary Fund. So it took a lot of courage for him to say, we don't like those values, we don't want to go that route. But yes, I think the BRIC countries would love to have a competitor to the dollar. And if you want to know the only other global currency in the world, again, don't ask the pundits for the Washington Post or the New York Times. Ask Alan Greenspan. He says that gold is not only a global currency, it's the only real global currency because it's, it's not controlled by any central bank. And I think he knows a thing or two. He was one of the longest serving chairmen of the world's most powerful central bank. When you have all these competing interests involved, it is sometimes hard to see the light beyond the trees. So, you know, that ultimately brings us to when XRP in a meaningful capacity in the United States, because XRP can be utilized in other parts of the world. But right now we are at a standstill because of, you know, the lack of regulatory clarity as uh, outlined here by Hester Peirce, uh, you know, kind of mucking it up from the start. Uh, 2018 could have been a better year in terms of starting that regulatory train moving forward. But 
Unfortunately, uh, those over there in power at the SEC decided to stonewall, as uh, Hester Peirce says here, decided to stonewall that process. So guys, what's going to happen now? This one, courtesy of Mac Attack XRP, apparently Brad Garlinghouse has given us an important date with regards to the final resolution in the Ripple SEC case. Why did the SEC go after XRP kind of first? You know, he says in some ways you look at it now... Uh, and you say we're almost at the very, very end of the journey. Remember, guys, Ripple got sued in 2020. It was the very first coin to get sued. And uh, for those of you guys who, well, you're probably here, you probably remember what happened on that day. And, uh, you know, the, the few days that were following, XRP did plummet because Ripple got sued. People were unloading XRP like it was nobody's business. The price did plummet. Uh, what was it? It plummeted 70% in a bull run, okay? In the middle of a bull run, right at the beginning of 2021 when we saw the uh, the euphoria phase. That was the worst possible time to get sued, but I think the SEC realized what they were doing. Tamping down the excitement, XRP was only able to get up to $1.96, which still, I mean, in a bull run after this suppression, wasn't bad. I still maintain that wasn't actually terrible. But guys, now we're in a different position here. XRP set, primed, ready to go, but we still need that final verdict. And when is that going to happen? Bank XRP here posting this. Brad Garling has from a few days ago at the Apex Summit in Amsterdam. Look, I think as you reflect on the last handful of years, we'll call it four or five years, there are things that are super frustrating. You know, why did the SEC go after XRP kind of first, if you will? Uh, you know, in some ways, you look at that now and you say, we're almost at the very, very end of that journey. I think that, you know, hopefully we have resolution. Uh, we, we can't control that now. The judge, you know, will make the decision when she makes the decision. I, my estimation is sometimes in sometime before the end of the summer, somebody asked me, is that the end of August? I pointed mm -hmm. out that September 21st is the end of summer. <laughs> so I don't know, sometime there. I think my birthday, August 28th, that's the end of but summer. You know what? If I'll ask her if we can celebrate your birthday with that. That would be, yeah. we'll all celebrate with you. We'll call the judge. But look, it, it has been frustrating. It, what has been exciting is the momentum that has been building. I mean, look, there are three times as many people here as the last Apex. This community is more active, more vibrant, more entrepreneurial. I mean, it's just awesome. Like, I, I see the momentum and the excitement here, and it's just very palpable. The U.S. market remains, frankly, a laggard. You know, uh, the U.S. regulatory environment, even though Ripple is at the tail end of that, and, and I think it's strange to me that XRP is in such a unique position and that the market hasn't kind of rewarded that. XRP in the US is one of the few things we can say definitively is not a security. With ETH, I don't know how that's going to play out, right? Apparently Wells notices, which is the SEC kind of pre-warning that we're going to file a lawsuit, have been gone out to consensus, well, purportedly as I've read, maybe on your side as well, to consensus. Uh, you know, we know the Ethereum Foundation has received various inquiries. So, look, it's super frustrating. And even, even it's not just the SEC. The United States kind of current administration uh, with Gary Gensler as the head of the SEC has been pretty hostile towards crypto. All right, I'm going to leave it there. But September 21st, I mean, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek answer. Nevertheless, we also have Fred Rispoli here. This one courtesy of Michael Branch. I'm predicting we have a ruling by the end of July, early August. Although, well, here's what he said, okay, Fred Rispoli, known for his advocacy for Ripple's position, has set the community's expectations by predicting a ruling by the end of, ju uh, end of July, early August. Notably, he mentioned the possibility of Judge Annalisa Torres issuing the decision on July the 13th, describing it as a poetic choice, given its historical significance in the case. And here's the quote from Fred, I'm predicting we have a ruling by the end of July, early August. Although Judge Torres could get poetic and issue it on July the 13th, he stated. On July 13, 2023, Judge Torres handed down a summary judgment, marking a decisive victory for Ripple by classifying XRP as a non-security. This landmark ruling resulted in a 100% price surge of XRP within a single day, highlighting its impact on market dynamics. And guys, when we do get this final verdict, don't think for a second that we will not see XRP price rise again due to FOMO. This is what's going to be the catalyst to get XRP price up off the ground and stay 
up off the ground. So Fred Raspoli basically saying we could have it by the end of July, which would make that, what, roughly 45 days? Early August, bringing us a little bit further in. And by late September, that's uh, Brad Garlinghouse's assessment there, because technically that is the end of summer. What I do know is that, you know, if we follow this chart here, 546 days, that's going to give XRP plenty of time to move in this bull market as we see other altcoins rise. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.